Hey everybody, Hoosier Jedi here with another review for you. This time I'm talking episode 2 of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. called 084. And uh, overall, this episode is pretty good, but it doesn't really have that, uh, that Joss Whedon magic exactly that the first episode did. There's a lot of nice little moments, and uh, the appearance by Nick Fury at the end is, wow, I mean, that was really great. That was everything you really could have wanted out of that, except for one thing, which I'll talk about a little later on. But overall, this is the episode where we really start to get the characters really and truly fleshed out. And the actual plot in and of itself, well, I'm sure there are elements that will probably come into play later on, but overall, the, the actual plot of this episode felt pretty thin. So let's just sort of deal like uh, deal with that, you know, right now. Uh, first of all, even though it looks like she's probably just going to end up being a one-shot character, I thought they did a reasonable job with Reyes. Um... And she certainly she certainly had good chemistry with Coulson, and you know getting a little insight into his past relationships with other people was certainly interesting. But you know you could kind of see that uh, she was going to stab him in the back. Boy, I bet Coulson's probably pretty tired of getting stabbed. You know, coming pretty far off, and frankly, you know, seeing the Shield guys getting taken down so easily uh, doesn't I think really speak too well of them. But um, well, let's be completely fair. The only two people, the only of the team, only Coulson, Ward, and May are really combat people. May gets gassed before she hasn't even has a chance to realize what's going on. Ward has to surrender because, well, because of hostages and all this other stuff. And Coulson, you know, he he went he he put up a good fight, but eh, no way it was was it Coulson that had to surrender because of hostages. Uh, yeah, I'm a little off my game today. Uh, but anyway, uh, in terms of actual characterization, though, I think the real prize for this episode has to go to Melinda May. Here we get to see why, in some circles, she is considered to be an extraordinary badass. And she proves it. I mean, just that whole thing with her breaking her wrist, I mean, snapping her, dislocating her wrist, I should say. I mean, did you notice that even Ward, you know, the most seasoned agent there, you know, a guy who has no stranger to violence or, you know, being tough, even he's kind of wincing at that. And keep in mind, he's somebody that S.H.I.E.L.D. basically considers to be just like one step below Black Widow. Now, granted, to be perfectly fair, that's in terms of his espionage abilities, not his combat abilities. But uh, Ward is not exactly a slouch there either, and if even he is impressed by how badass Melinda May is, well, what we see from here is probably just the tip of the iceberg. Uh, Fitz and Simmons. Now, I was really pleased that they kind of really started to uh, flesh these guys out here. Now, some people have noticed that, actually, as far as the first episode, that uh, is it Fitz. Fitz is the dude that he had named his uh, little robot critters after the seven dwarfs, and he has one of them that's called Snow, presumably after Snow White. And that's, that's a very cute little touch. It sort of, I think, touches on the more childish aspects of his personality. And it's also funny to see them stop outside the ruins to take a moment to take a selfie. That was definitely a cute moment. And, uh, well, let's see. Sky, uh, again, we're still sort of feeling our way with Sky. She obviously has still has some reservations about what's going on with Shield. And I like how Coulson basically flat out tells her, "Yeah, we're going to ask you to do stuff that's essentially contradictory to everything that you believe." So that kind of raises the question, of course, is one of the questions is, you know, that Coulson raised this the last time in the first episode. He talked about how he got to see gods up close and that he paid the price for it. Well, here we see that Sky is taking a step somewhat into that world, and we're starting to get a little bit of an idea of what the price might be for her. However, of course, we get the big stinger at the end that uh, this was all kind of planned on Sky's part, that she's in. And if you stop and think about it, S.H.I.E.L.D. did manage to catch her awfully easily. I mean, if this was somebody who had managed to 
you know, get into databases and erase herself to such a degree that even S.H.I.E.L.D. didn't know who she was, getting caught like that seems like an awful sloppy mistake. But now in retrospect, it makes perfect sense. And that's a real hallmark of smart writing. When you can say, you can come up with something when there's a, you know, a swerve in the plot, but when you stop and think back about everything that has happened before, you're like, oh yeah, that makes sense. There were clues there. Now, granted, that might have been extrapolating a little far, you know, one only one episode to go on, but still, very nicely done there, very nicely done. And, um, honestly, I don't really have that much else to say about the characters. It's This is the episode where we start to see the team coming together. I mean, there's all this big speech about how everybody's going to have to pull their talents in order to escape the cargo hold and take down the bad guys and save the day. Yada, yada, yada. I mean, I mean we've, we've seen all of this a hundred times before. And there's nothing wrong with that. There, Depending on the story you're telling, sometimes there are just certain plot device moments or situations that are probably almost inevitably going to come up. And there's nothing wrong with that. There isn't as long as they are executed well. People are actually astonishingly forgiving on that point, so long as you execute those scenes well. And this show really does do that. But uh, anyway, uh, getting back to some of my quibbles with this episode. First of all, I have to say this whole thing with uh, the gadget they found in the Incan Temple the Incan temple that actually looks nothing like Incan architecture. In fact, the temple is quite obviously inside and outside Mayan. But most people, that's going to go over the heads of most people. So, you know, it's TV, right? Anyway, so, okay. Let me make sure I understand what's going on right here. This thing is supposed to be about 1,500 years old. It's a fuel cell for the Tesseract. But it was apparently built by Hydra. Um, yeah, I mean, they even talk about German engineering. Okay, clearly I've missed something during the explanation of everything going on. I mean, is there some time travel going on? Was Hydra here in this temple before? Did they build this case around some sort of energy source and then for whatever reason just leave it there? Uh, yeah, guys, I, I admit I missed something in this plot because I I really don't understand quite what was going on there. But I definitely do like the idea of uh, the slingshot. That's a very cute idea, and it sort of always harkens back to one of those great questions I see in fiction. It's like, oh, God, we have this horribly dangerous artifact that's just been sitting around somewhere. And, you know, now it's dang endangering the entire world. It's like, well, why didn't somebody just go out and destroy this thing? You know, why didn't somebody burn the evil book of horrible, horrible magic? You know, or, or here, they basically say they're going to shoot this thing into space. Now, why didn't they just shoot this into the sun? I don't know. And again, you might not want to go shooting alien technology into the sun, because if it goes and screws up the sun, oh boy, are we all in trouble. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I almost forgot. I, I definitely have to talk about the uh, Nick Fury cameo. As I said, it was really great to see Nick Fury. I mean, Samuel L. Jackson, uh, not really a guy who does TV. But, you know, here, bam. Now, of course, this makes sense. You know, we had... Uh, yeah, Maria Hill in the first episode. Now we've got Fury. They've definitely got to make sure that they really strongly tie this into the movies. Now, I'm not really sure why Coulson, who was in pretty much all those Marvel movies, isn't tie enough, but it certainly never hurts to have uh, some of the other people from the film make appearances. And, you know, who knows? We might actually have an actual Avengers show up before the end of the season. It remains to be seen. But, uh... Well, I certainly did enjoy that scene. I gotta say, like him just going around and complaining about the budget, that just doesn't really feel like something Nick Fury would do to me. I mean, remember in the Avengers movie, he basically t tells, you know, the shadowy United Nations guys or 
World Security Council or whatever the heck those guys are called. Uh, F you, I'm Nick Fury. I'm going to do what I want because I know it's the right thing to do. And now Nick Fury's sitting around complaining about the budget. Really? Does this actually seem like the same dude? Uh, yeah, I swear, this reminds me of the somewhat ridiculous uh, shifting between uh, focusing on what's important and what isn't important that you sometimes see in the Ultimate Spider-Man cartoons version of Agent Coulson, who is also voiced by, voiced by Greg Clark there. Really cool. So yeah, as I said, overall, the the plot of this episode is, I think, pretty weak. But we are definitely starting to see the characters flesh out, the team cohesion is starting to build, and you know a few interesting ideas are included, and the plot is advanced forward a little bit. Basically, this is really what you would want, for the most part, out of a second episode of a series. Really, the biggest drawback that you can ha say about it, this episode really, is that it's just not quite as much zing in it as the pilot episode did. But of course, uh, with a pilot episode, you have to 100% bring your best game. And this episode just doesn't quite have that Joss Whedon magic to it. But still, it's certainly an entertaining about hour of television, and I had a lot of fun watching it. I'm just hoping that the story next episode is a little bit stronger. Anyway, guys, that's all I have for you now. Until next time, take care and have a good one.